Hi, I'm Nancy Drasassian, and in January, I'm going to be talking about some analysis I've done in a research project that has been over 20 years now, investigating the epistemic practices in emerging fields in the bioengineering sciences. In particular, for this talk, I'm going to look at how biomedical engineers re-engineer biology in order to investigate it. They re-engineer it materially and conceptually in a practice that I've called in vitro simulation modeling. The research is based on data collected in cognitive ethnographies of bioengineering science labs. These investigations are of in situ epistemic practices in pioneering university research labs where the primary researchers are graduate students being led by a uh, director who is the principal investigator. In biomedical engineering, we've looked at two fields, tissue engineering and neural engineering. In the integrated systems biology, we've looked at two fields, one a purely computational simulation modeling laboratory and the other a computational laboratory that also does wet modeling and surface of building models. But for the talk, I'm going to focus on biomedical engineering studies, and in particular, on the tissue engineering. So the motivations for these studies are multiple. One is I wanted to tackle the problem of integrating the cognitive, social, and material dimensions of scientific practice. Second, I wanted to focus on methodological innovation in emerging scientific fields. Third, the choice of the engineering sciences was to get insight into the basic epistemic landscape of biological engineering, which is becoming more and more prevalent in 21st century science. And third, to assist faculty members and researchers in facilitating research and learning in these emerging fields. An overview of my talk is that, first of all, biomedical engineering sciences have two aims, dual aims, that I call getting a grip. The first is to develop an understanding of complex biological systems, and the second is to manipulate control or intervene on them. The second is often very far off, and the first um, is also somewhat far off too, because the primary activity that we have seen is that the scientists need to come and understand their models before they can do any of the research. They develop these in vivo, in vitro model uh, simulation practices because it's not feasible to experiment on in vivo systems. There are ethical concerns about uh, in experimenting on animals and people. And there are also issues of control. They can't get the controls right if they were to do the in vivo research. So they have developed an epistemic practice that I call in vitro simulation modeling, where these models are ontologically and epistemically hybrid. They bring together materials and methods and concepts of engineering, various engineering fields, and biology. The process is an incremental and iterative bootstrapping process of building models to both serve as epistemic tools and also serve as hubs for interlocking the various cognitive cultural dimensions of practice. And then finally, the talk, the talk will focus on specific in vitro models and, and trying to understand them as analogical sources for understanding complex biological systems. In particular, building the model as an analogical source, what's involved in that process, building the warrant for the model in order to be able to do analogical transfer, and third, building a warrant for the novel methodological practice. In the analogical literature, both in philosophy and in cognitive science, uh, source, the source, the analogical source is usually something that is ready to hand or that can be found from a solved problem. But in these cases, there is no solved problem in these frontier research places. And so this is a practice that has not really been investigated in either of those literatures, which is building the model itself, that is, as an analogical source. 
just to give you a sense of what some of these models look like, this is what's called a flow loop model or device, which is the local term in the labs. And what it does is it simulates the flow of blood through the lumen in the cardiovascular system. And in that little container there, uh, chamber, there are either cells or another model that I will be talking about too, called the construct. Um, and the hemodynamics of blood can then be examined in this way. Another model that we've looked at is a very sexy model. Um, and up in the corner, what you see is the activity of a dish of neurons. These neurons are living in Atlanta, whereas the mechanical arm that it's controlling in a feedback loop is in Australia in this case. It's an in vitro model system of embodied neural network learning. It is also what was called a living robotic artist because it uh, served in many displays of um, mechanical and, and uh, biomechanical art. To, think, to show that these are um, more widespread, these in vitro simulation models, Here's also one that we haven't studied, but it's called a lung on a chip. That is, these models now can be reduced to a size of a microfluidic device. And this particular model is the one that they have been doing studies on a range of existing drugs to see whether or not they can uh, overcome the effects of COVID or prevent the effects of COVID-19. So basically, it's this kind of model that I'm going to be talking about in my, in my talk. Um, if you are interested in more about the entire research project and all of the labs in which I've studied, there is a book that's forthcoming with MIT, Interdisciplinary and Making Models and Methods in Frontier Science. Don't have a cover for it yet, but I'm really hoping that they'll use one of the drawings from Mayart, which is, uh, is one that I've chosen here. So I look forward to talking to you in November, no, not November, sorry, uh, talk, talking to you in January. Um, this has been very weird talking to myself. So I hope to see you then, bye.